Hi, welcome to this tutorial. Now, in an earlier tutorial, I showed you how to find the areas of sectors and arc lengths. Now, I'm just going to run over one or two numerical examples just to finalize this. So, suppose we have a sector OACB, which comes from a circle of radius 10 centimeters and the angle subtended at the center here is 125 degrees. And if we're asked to find the area okay, of OACB then it's going to equal a fraction of the area of the complete circle and that fraction was 125 degrees compared to a full turn of 360 degrees. So it was 125 three sixtieths of the complete area of the circle. So it's of the area of a circle which is pi r squared and in this case it will be pi times 10 squared. Now if you work that out on a calculator what you get is 109.0830 and so on. And if we round this to, say, one decimal place, we have 109.1, and the units that we're using are centimetres, so area would be centimetre squares, to one decimal place. So that's the area, then, of OACB, the sector OACB. Now, suppose we're asked to find the arc length ACB. The arc length, just write it in, OK, arc length ACB equals again a fraction, that fraction being 125 three sixtieths of the circumference of the circle, the distance all the way around the outside. Formula for the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r, so it would be of 2 times pi times the radius of 10. And again, working this out, you'll find that you get 21.8166 and so on. This is a measurement of length, and that length will be centimetres, so it's 21.8 centimetres if we round it to one decimal place. Now, not all sectors come with an angle measured in degrees. We can have sectors where we have radians, and here's an example. In this particular example, I decided not to have a circle all the way round because quite a lot of the questions that you get, to be honest, are just simply the sector itself. So you've got to bear in mind that there's a circle all the way round here. Okay? But again, if we had to find the area of the sector, so we just say that the area okay, would equal a fraction of the area of the complete circle. So that fraction would be 1.8. And remember, in an earlier tutorial, I showed you that in one complete turn, there were 2 pi radians. So we've got to compare the 1.8 to the 2 pi. So that's the fraction of the circle that the area of the sector takes up. So it's going to be that fraction of the area of the circle, pi r squared, pi times, in this case, 5 squared. And if you use your calculator to work that one out, what you find you get is 70.685 and so on. Okay, and if we round that up, we've got, say, to one decimal place, we've got 70.7. And don't forget the units have changed in this one, so that is meter squares to one decimal place. Okay, now... Some of you might have typed in that pi that you've got here if you're using your calculator. But in fact, you didn't need to type in the pi's because in this particular type of example, when you're dealing with radians, you're always going to have a pi r squared here and you'll always have a 2 pi down here. So in these examples, the pi's actually cancel out. So it's a bit of a waste of time typing them into your calculator. All you really need to do is essentially type in the angle, times it by the radius squared, and divide by 2. In other words, the area is essentially 
theta, the angle at the center, r squared divided by 2. Okay? Now, the trouble is, using this particular formula, okay, I've often seen students make mistakes. They learn this and they think they can apply it when you're dealing with degrees. Okay, so often you see people say the area in a case like this is the angle 125 times 10 squared over 2. If you do that, you're going to get it wrong. Okay, only apply this formula if you want to when you're dealing with radians. I personally don't. I always seem to find that this is easier for me purely because it doesn't cost me anything to cancel the pies out, hardly any time at all, and yet I still maintain the same structure, the same kind of thinking, whether it be degrees or whether it be radians. Okay, let's have a look now anyway at the length of the arc. So we'll have a look at the arc length. Uh, arc length. Okay, if we're doing that one, Again, it's got to be a fraction of the circumference, and that fraction is going to be 1.8 over 2 pi times 2 pi r, the circumference, 2 times pi times the radius of 5. Okay, so if you work that out on your calculator, try it, see what you get. Okay, when I did it, I got an exact value, 9, and in this case, 9 meters. Now, did you type in the pies again? Well, you don't have to. In fact, you don't even have to type in the 2 pi because the 2 pi here cancels with the 2 pi underneath here. And that will always happen. The circumference 2 pi r, the 2 pi will cancel with the 2 pi. And what that will leave you with always is that the length of the arc is always the angle times the radius. So we could say that the arc length, if I call it L, okay, is equal to the angle at the centre here, call it theta, times the radius. But again, you've got to be so, so careful with these formulas. You can only use this formula if you're working in radians. Okay? Don't use it, again, in degrees. This arc length here is not going to be the angle 125 times 10. If you did, that would be 1,250 centimetres. Well, clearly, that's not going to be that length. So, you can only use these methods, these two formulas, that is, when you're dealing with radians. But again, I'm going to reiterate that, personally, I don't really encourage that because it leads to mistakes in degrees. I think you're just as well, personally, writing the fraction of the circumference or the fraction of the area. But, you know, if you remember to cancel out the pies, that's really going to save you some time. OK, another question that I'm asked, actually, just before we wind this up, is should my calculator be in radians? Well, in fact, it doesn't matter what mode you're in when you're doing calculations like these. You, the calculator would be quite happy working this out in radians mode or this one in degrees mode. The only time that you need to put your calculator in radians mode is if you're having to take the sine, cosine or tangent of an angle that is in radians. Okay, And we'll discuss that later in uh, another tutorial where we look at the areas of sector, segments, I mean, sorry, and uh, the areas of triangles. Okay, well, hopefully you've got that now and should be able to do any question that is asking you to find out the area of a sector or the length of an arc.